are going to go to Natick High School for the Massachusetts Championship. And if you do well there, you'll end up at the World Championships in beautiful downtown Detroit, a place you all want to go. So my name is Kanyeta Gonzalez. I am currently the lead programmer and first driver for the Final Frontier Robotics team for Frontier Regional School South Deerfield. I'm Mary Lawrence and and I'm um, the CAD director. Or I'm a junior and I'm being the coach for this for the first round. Yeah. So. I guess to introduce FTC, so FTC is the robotic competition uh, that's nationwide and essentially you get a bunch of groups to participate, you build a robot for a certain challenge. This particular challenge was to essentially build skyscrapers, so we have essentially these uh, like giant Lego bricks and the idea is you want to stack them high and the higher you stack it the more points you get. In order to accomplish that most people have built essentially what are cranes, so our robot we've dubbed the crane. It uses a system of linear drawer slide lifts to essentially move itself upwards. In here. So the two phones that you see mounted here are essentially used to communicate the controller input through Wi-Fi to the actual uh, hubs that are located here and here where all the servos and motors are plugged into. So they communicate wirelessly. So what we can do here so I'll just initialize this. All right. So we use this linear lift system. So I'll, I'll pull this up. So as you can see, the idea is that we can lift ourselves up, move ourselves out, open up, go down, and then grab onto things. This is not very well positioned, but I think I've got it. Yeah, there we go. And that's how you handle the, uh, the bricks and such. The higher you stack, the more points you get. Uh, that's kind of the idea of the whole entire game. Um, you have this arena that, we have a practice arena there and the actual arena there. The essential setup of the arena is that you have two parts. You have your quarry area and your building area. There's this big foundation in the building area that essentially is just these nubs. Um, that you can then stack your bricks on. That's where you're going to build your towers. In the quarry area, that's where you can collect the bricks. So the whole process is a system of picking them up, moving them to the building, and then stacking them. Uh, however, you have a teammate to do this with you, so you can strategize and figure out who's doing what. Uh, so you could do it in an assembly line system where you have your teammate handling the picking up of the objects, bring them to the building, and then you can then pick them up and stack them. That's our plan. At the end, you essentially count up all the points, so every brick that you move into the building zone gets you a point, every brick that you put under the foundation gets you a point, every stack gets you a point. And this capstone here, every team has one capstone, and the idea is that you put it on top of your tower, and for every layer underneath the capstone is a certain amount of points, so you really want to put this on top. And that's kind of the general idea of the whole thing. The whole entire FTC, all the games from FTC, are organized into two sets. You have the autonomous period and the tele-op period. The autonomous period is where it's totally hands-off, the human player doesn't control anything, and the robot goes on its own based on whatever the programmer told it to do. You can earn certain points this way and that lasts about 30 seconds. That's usually where most things go wrong. Once the 30 seconds are over, you move into the tele-op period, and the idea there is that now you can actually control it with the controllers and move it around and score your points through the player control period. After that, there's another subsection of the tele-op period called the end game. That's the last 30 seconds of the minute and a half for the tele-op period. And you can earn special points in the end game. For example, if you've built your tower up on the foundation and then you move the foundation to a certain point, you can get points for that. That requires you have a sturdy tower though. Put in your capstone for the end game part of it. And that's pretty much everything with today's uh, event, and that's pretty much how we do it. We just finished the opening ceremony. We're up on the fifth qualifier, so we're essentially wrapping things up, planning out who's driving, who's controlling. There's three different players. You have your two controllers. One's going to control movement, one controls the arms, and uh, the third player is your human player, and the idea in this game is that the human player can put more bricks into the arena, so that way if you run out of pre-existing bricks, you can always put more in and build up a higher tower if we get there. So we're essentially planning out who's going to be who. Yeah, so in the game you have an alliance and they're randomly decided in matches and wherever this one's worked up. And um, you'll have an alliance and you'll score points together against another alliance that's on the other side of the arena. 
and um, with this game they don't really need to interact that much, there's like two kind of halves of the field, but um, in last year's game it was a little bit more interactive, the game changes every year, but um, yeah, so then um, the points are scored with the alliance itself, and then and like they're kind of kept track of individually, and then that's how the rating system is done. And um, at FTC, the um, the top four players get to move on to um, um, like the actually eliminating matches, and they get to choose their alliance partner and, and like compete with them for whatever rounds they get to. And if the top uh, alliance, I think, yeah, the top alliance of this entire competition gets to move on to another, another entire thing. This is the alliance bridge, right? Yeah. If you could just start on the right side of the Evan. alliance bridge, and then just move in a little bit. We can do that. So can you just write an off quick, like, just move forward? Yeah, we can definitely do that. Yeah. Okay. All right. Great. All right, and you're, so you're going to be doing all the moving of the foundation and all that? Yeah. So if we're on the blue side, this is the blue side, right? Yeah. So start on the left side, have it going towards the Right side, just look at it like this. Have it start on the right side. Okay. Uh, do you want us to move into the bridge as soon as it starts? Because I don't want to get in your way if you need to. Yeah, no, we're fine. You can do it as soon as it starts. Okay. Delivering stones. Like, could you do that? We're better at building, I think. Um, our delivering is not as fast. No. What's your max stack height? Our max stack height. So, yeah. do you guys have an optimal where you can just drive forward two inches just to park? Because they can move the. We can well. get two sky stones, put it on the foundation, and park it. So, there's a few challenges getting here. So, of course, the main thing is having to go up so high. So, our robot right now, I'm going to go up pretty nice. Oh, did I stop it? I did. I'll have to reset it. So, the idea is that we use these drawer slides essentially. So, what you'd use for drawers. Uh, but instead, they go up. And we have bearings here with Kevlar string going here. And that wraps around a winch. So, as we tighten this up, it pulls down on this and lifts the winch up. Uh, inside of it, we had to do some wire management because, of course, in order to move this way and open this up, we need these motors and servos. And all these have wires going down here. But because we're going up and down, we can't just have the wires connected. So we needed a spring system here. So that's what we did for wire management. Uh, and that allows us to go up and down without messing up our cables. Uh, similar system for stuff like the extension. It's just the drawer slide, another drawer slide, but it's run with the chain. Um, here we have our foundation grabbers, so the idea is that you can, the idea is that these go down, grip the foundation, so then you can pull it. Let's see, our wheels, our driving system uses a special type of wheel called a mechanic wheel. So the idea, if you take a look at them here, they spin both on this direction like a normal wheel would, but they also have these 45 degree rollers. What that allows them to do is allows you to move left, right, and diagonally any way you want. Normally when you have a normal wheel setup, you go forward and backwards, and that's it. And then if you move those in multiple directions, you can rotate. You can do all that here. In addition to that, however, you can go directly backwards, or you can go side to side by moving these towards each other and these away from each other. Uh, so we've been doing the robotics team for a number of years. Uh, I'm, gosh, going back 10, 15 years, right? But the FIRST Robotics has been a recent new program. We've done it in the last uh, two years. And uh, so we're still second year as Team 15590. It's a worldwide program, uh, FIRST uh, Robotics. They do all different levels of competitions. And gosh, it's just so great because they really uh, teach the students how to be professionals, how to contact professionals, and I mean again they have to learn everything from leadership and marketing to engineering, uh, CAD design, uh, you name it. Uh, we, we have to incorporate all that into our project. Parents are, and anyone really in the community is welcome to be a mentor. We are looking for people that are interested in you know being safety uh, officers or um, just giving some advice on project management uh, or other tasks that we, we need. So. so we generally meet uh, two to three times a week and we run from September to February and we'll typically go to two competitions during that time so the build season is quite extensive uh, we'll you know meet after school or on an early release Friday and you know work for as long as we can funding comes from a combination of sources uh, companies and sponsors uh, can give us uh, sometimes donations uh, we get donations from families and Right now, we do have a club fee to get us uh, at least over the hurdle of the registration cost. 
Um, we do run a budget about $2,000 a year just to be able to compete. Um, anything extra, um, you know, new set of wheels, you know, we're, we're raising money for. So uh, we'll do a fundraiser here and there, um, but a m large part of it is companies and local um, uh, professionals investing in this program for engineering you know, minds and our, our future students.
race, which earns points. Um, and we're able to pass on stones under the Alliance Pacific Bridge several times, which also earns points. Um, we were also able to complete our autonomous program to the best of our abilities, which actually went really well. Um, nothing really ranked. We got shoved under the Alliance Pacific Bridge, which are technically don't we don't fit under that. It's 14 inches tall, and we were closer to 16, but we ended up getting shoved under it, which it worked. We went under, but we ended up being able to park underneath that for the autonomous, which earned us which earned us points. Yeah. The way we move it is we hook, so we might have to actually get to the other side and back up rather than go into. The no, don't back up because then you might bump the other chair. Yeah. We, oh, we, you're right. Yeah, we got to be careful we not to get that. We could also pull. Yeah. How do you guys move foundation? We can do it. We can pull it out, or we can also push it up front. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. If you, want, if you want to do that, then, and then you guys can get yourself in a position to park. Yeah. Um, and then if we can fit in there, we'll see. Yeah. All right. So you guys will. So we'll put the capstones, and then you guys move the foundation. Yeah. We'll do that. All right. We'll have Twenty seconds to get no. the capstones. It is the same course, just with different teammates and different opponents. So uh, you just kind of got to figure out what the strategy is between you two, because they're totally different robots. There's a huge diverse kind of uh, design of robots around here. So you got to make sure that you're compatible and you play to each robot's strengths on your team. I helped a bit with the, this and the drawer slides, because, well, drawer slides is basically what I did last year. So you were you, you were make sure the door slides work. And, yeah. Well, I helped with that. seconds left in the match. Good job by bite size. They got some good help from our volunteers. 14,314. 
that cleared a path. And now Coyle and Cassidy putting the second stone on top of that blue foundation. And they carry it over. That's a hard maneuver for the robot to pick up pick up the weight of the stone over the robot's head and deliver it down to the foundation. That's a very good articulated arm. Even though it wobbles a little bit, it's still working pretty well. We're down to the last 10 seconds of the match. Circuit Breaker's having trouble with the robot, but not enough time for a reboot. And three, two, one. And that's the end of the match. Number eight. Great job, these hardworking teams. A whole bunch of struggles, but both sides got points on the board. There you have it. Not a lot of points, but you still got a winner. Yeah, so we're slightly off center for the zero, so we'll probably have to unscrew this and re put in the. Oh, somebody re tightened it. Oh, no, 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 one, no one deserves to see this. I'm literally duct taping something in place. Yeah, um. When all else fails, duct tape. I don't anymore. Sure goes off. That's what I was asking. Cool, so I put the duct tape on a bracket here. And I want to make sure I can take anything else by accident. You know what, Richard? Oh, never mind. You want to run a teleloft test? You know, whether it was wiring, uh, is, is a big part. How do you get the wiring to move with the motors that are moving? Um, and keep it reliable, you know, keep it from, you know, a robot will hit a wall and lose connection and fail. So how do you stop that from happening? Uh, so we, we had some hard lessons last year where the robot was cold on the floor and we couldn't operate it. Okay, is there one? Uh, and then, do you guys want to drag out a sand or shall we the foundation and then stand? Uh, uh, it, it doesn't really matter. All right, there's the score. Three point difference, and the blue lines wins 51, red lines 48. And on the blue lines from South Deerfield, Final Frontier Robotics and And finally, from Attleboro, the Bishop Freeman Robotics team number two. Time to randomize. <laughs> All right, field's clear. Drivers are behind the line. Red alliance ready, blue alliance ready, and three, two, one, go.
and he's going to put another one of those stones on top of the foundation. We've got some dragging parts on the other side of the field. 16,000. 15,643. The Bishop D&T. There's some things dragging the floor. The robot seems to move, and the, the gripper still works. Meanwhile, the gear ticks in the front of the field are still trying to grab another stone. And now we're two stories uh, tall on the red foundation. And now we come up on the last 30 seconds of this match. Team Devin Trouble getting under the crossbar over on the blue side of the field. And now you're going to see all four robots work their way to the back corner. Good job by Bishop V of team number one. They're in the corner, making some room for their teammate. And that's coming up on the end. Three, two, one. Great job to those four teams.
where Rational now has their third stone put onto the foundation. And the Winter Wild Box. They're pushing their foundation to that back corner. And now the robot's going to wait for its alliance partner to bring up some stones. Nope, they're going to lower the front arm, get underneath the bridge. Go out to the front of the field, grab a stone themselves. We've already got five stones on the blue side of the field. The Irrational Team and the Aquabots doing a great job. Now we've got six stones. Wow, 75 seconds left. We've got six stones already. There's the potential to have a high score in this match. The tricky part's going to be moving that foundation at the end game. If that tower gets too tall, it can fall over. 13,621, the Wild Box from Boston. They're trying to put their second stone in the foundation, and they're going to stack it right on top of the first one. We've got eight stones right now on the blue foundation, and they're stacked six high. Coming up on 35 seconds left. We're now seven stones tall. How much higher is that blue alliance going to get? Eight stones! And the smartest thing I've seen so far today, they grabbed the foundation and the top stone, and it's moved in place. We're less than 10 seconds, both move up to the corner. That could be a new high score! We'll see how it plays out in just And there you have a new high score! Blue Lions, 104 points, Red Lions, 41. I think that the other team is did a really great job and is probably going to States, but I think we did our best, and that's sometimes enough. Mary, what did you think of that last bout? Um, I think we did good, we just got... The, the other team did really well. They got eight stacked. So. Four, one, what was it? 102? Four. 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 What is that tall? 104. 104. Eight blocks stacked. Yeah, eight blocks stacked and a bunch of other points. So I think we did good. We just didn't win. And we, we moved down a couple ranks, but that's okay. You know. Any chance you guys are going to team up with that one of those robots in the end? Well, yeah, if we make it there, then. If we or someone else makes it there, then we'll try to maybe shimmy our way into just being a partner. Yeah, well, we, we've got one qualifier left, so we'll see how that goes. Um, ultimately, um, I didn't expect to play as high as we did, um, considering all the setbacks we had. So I'd consider today an, uh, just a win with already the matches that we've done. We did a lot better than I thought we would. Our autonomous worked pretty smoothly. Actually, so far we haven't had a failed autonomous, which is amazing just for anybody. <laughs> Usually autonomous is the first thing to fail. Um, our tele-op has been a bit shaky, but we pretty much nailed what we tried to do. What we set our goal to is usually what we ended up doing, so I think it ended up working out pretty well. In terms of the function of the robot, most of it's working pretty alright. Um, you know, it's just, um, we finished a robot quite late, so we didn't have a lot of time for people to practice controlling the robot. So a lot of what's happening is just coming from people aren't as used to controlling the robot with the movement or the arms and picking things up. So we're a bit slow in that aspect. Uh, in terms of anything mechanical failure, it's actually gone pretty well, which is shocking considering last year we ripped off the metal that held our arm in place and it completely fell off and uh, our autonomous works like maybe like a third of the time. So I think we're pretty good. It's just, you know, more practice would have been good. Oh, well that one, did you see that? That robot was so sweet. They stacked up eight blocks high. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not, I'm not even worried about going that because, like, I don't know how you even compete with that. They're going straight to states for sure. Like, that's that was crazy. I believe there's one more. Um, for us, we're gonna we're gonna call it here. Um, you know, it costs a decent amount to enter into the competitions, so you kind of gotta um, budget yourself. After this, then they're gonna go to states, and then they're gonna they're gonna see who's going to Detroit, and then um, we'll see who officially wins. Um, We're gonna hide you. Yeah, for us though, uh, today's the day. Today's the day, and I think it went pretty well. So.
music. It, it has some problems when you strafe off to the right. It'll start to turn counterclockwise. Yeah. So, I mean, do the left. When you go to the left, it's fine. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. I think it's been really fun. We've we've been doing pretty well. We have had some minor setbacks with. Of rearranging our code and with fixing minor repairs on the robot. But other than that, we've been doing our best and about as well as we expected to. There's some really impressive teams here that have been able to do really well, and it's been incredible watching all of these incredible machines doing what they can. No, that's not worth it. Put your losses on those tip over blocks. Um, maybe try to like turn around and grab something from there.
Yeah. As somebody who's not on the red team, you cannot enter the red team depot. That's obstructing the depot. Yeah. Because if a human player is putting their hand in there, it's a safety concern. Uh, it's always a lot of fun. Uh, they dig well. They have a very uh, polite robot, I think. Very, very uh, graceful robot. And uh, it takes a lot to get there. <laughs> like, for me personally, the autonomous for the first time in any of our like it attempts went really this, well. Went well. Yeah. Last year the autonomous like broke half yeah. the time. Like it probably worked like maybe a quarter of the time and like worked by accident the other quarter of the time and then half the time it just didn't do anything. So did you guys not move on the platform enough to get the points the for platform has it? to get right into the triangle. We hit the tip of the triangle. Yeah, that's what I thought. It. But it would look like it was working great. Yeah. yeah. It did exactly what it was supposed to in theory, it just didn't quite get yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Four, five rounds, so that's yeah. something you said. Exactly. So. That did not happen last year. Last year, a yeah. robot died pretty much every other round. Yeah. Like something in a robot failed, a mechanical failure. In this case, we never once got an error message on our telemetry. Well, programmers no. had two days of programming. <laughs> I'm really happy. I think and they did it. Nice job. Nice I think job. I think in terms of the programming <laughs> side, I think we did really well. I think everything worked out for as the, one of the lead programmers. I think it really worked out. Peter did an absolutely fantastic job with the driving system. I really think that the teleop went really well. The autonomous, I managed to get that to work completely blind without looking at the thing. Honestly, it's a miracle all that worked, and I'm really glad that ended up being the smoothest part of this. Um, I, I think, of course, for next time, it would have been great to have uh, practice, so uh, I think the biggest thing is just, you know, our drivers now have practice time to really start with it, because the robot wasn't done until last night, so... Yeah. <laughs> One in the morning! <laughs> yeah. So, that's, that's the thing. But, however, all things considered, I think it was pretty great. I think it did quite well. I think they did great. I, I think, think great. I think that it's, it's just been a lot of work and they worked so hard all year on this that uh, getting here and getting this far was it's a huge accomplishment. Absolutely. They should be very proud. Yep. And I think they did a wonderful job starting with a box of parts and having the robot actually run in this the event. So. And it did all they wanted it to do. And they, they accomplished what they wanted. Yeah, they set out to make it to a specific thing and did that. And we should feel really good about that. Absolutely. Well, I'm glad we got two bricks in that last round. It just, I don't know. We could have done things better. We could have done things worse. It's, yeah. it's fine. We're good. I, I still had a lot of fun anyways.